This is Andrew for the Chosen Prime with the video review of Masterpiece movie series MPM3 uh, Bumblebee, which is a Masterpiece version of Bumblebee from the live action Transformers movies. Um, as far as we can tell, this is a shared co release from both Hasbro and Takarotomi. You can see that on this box that says both uh, companies. And this box essentially is the same size as your standard um, Japanese Masterpiece box, same height, just a little bit longer. And then overall, the box here matches the same styling. It's all in English as for this little sticker here uh, for the Asian market. Um, again, the figure should be the same across both releases. Inside the box here, he does come packaged in his vehicle mode, in a simple tray with twist ties. There's no um, kind of tray cover. He comes with a set of instructions here that are actually in English and in color that go through both of his modes. And then the other accessory that he, only accessory he comes with is his little uh, hand blaster here, a stinger blaster, which can peg onto his hand. You can actually store this in his vehicle mode. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here at MPM3. Taking a closer look here at MPM's vehicle mode. It is based off of the original concept Camaro from the original first Transformers movie. Um, it is pretty much spot on to that version of the Camaro. It is a little bit um, off in that the uh, mirrors and some of the way the bumper here look are off, but it is based off that original um, movie one version of Bumblebee, and it's an excellent version of that Camaro. You can see it's got a lot of nice uh, detail here, um, different colored rims, turn signals, uh, Camaro, um, door handle, painted mirrors. You can see the stripe and the painted uh, tail lights here, nice bits of silver from his legs here. And it's overall a nice looking version of that uh, original uh, 2007 concept Camaro. The yellow here is a nice warm yellow. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. It is a nice gloss and just how kind of warm this looks. But you can see just how nice this version of his uh, Camaro um, mode looks like right here. He is essentially six and a half inches to the back of his vehicle mode here, which is just the same as his height. And he's actually uh, pretty heavy for what this figure. He's uh, six and seven eight ounces because he's got a bit, quite a bit of die cast in it. If we look at the underside here, this part right here is die cast. Um, parts of his legs and his feet are as well as his torso. He's a big, a hefty figure. Um, as you can see here, you can store the stinger weapon um, here on the underside. So normally it does come packaged in, in like this where it can be plugged into his hand, but you just take it and split it. And there's a tab um, on this one side that matches a tab hole on the bottom of the vehicle right here. And it's a matter of just pl plugging that in, and you can store the uh, stinger attachment here in his vehicle mode with no problem. So he all, has all his accessories here in his uh, vehicle mode. Very, very nice. Best version of this uh, car mode we've gotten yet in toy form. So let's go ahead and take a look at the transformation into his very cool robot mode. To transform Bumblebee here, we want to come to his doors and pull them open, untapping them. And you can see how this little piece comes along with it, with the uh, door panel here. So just unpeg these two pieces, come to the uh, doors here and pull them out and they'll extend these little hinges. Come to the underside here, make sure to remove the uh, cannon piece and unpeg it. Now we can come to these arms and reach underneath and lift them up so they come up underneath the panel or out of the uh, bottom of the car. Now that'll lift up this uh, windshield just enough that we can now fold these uh, wheels back on each side. And now we can take these little panels here in the front and angle them up and the arms will come with it. So just rotate the arm and lift it up and there's his uh, front. Come to these little uh, front pieces here and they'll just uh, hinge Close, close to the front of the vehicle here to kind of mimic the uh, rubber mode chest. Come to the back of the legs back here, pull them apart, that will release the entire uh, windshield part right here and we want to just continue to fold it up. So fold this piece, fold this piece, it'll fold again. This little joint here is a little bit stiff. And now take the front windshield and fold it back on a double hinge. And you can see how it all sandwiches together nicely like this. We'll come to the front here. His head will flip forward. Um, it is a tight fit. You can kind of see there it's a tight fit, but we want to move it forward like that. And now we can take the entire um, front canopy here. It'll hinge all the way in nicely and sit um, inside his chest here like this. And so now you can see this kind of lever mechanism here. 
And so there's actually several points where it actually all pegs together. So there's a peg here that matches the metal part here. Um, the This piece will hinge down and lock into place. And then there's actually another tab here in the front that'll tab into the front of Bumblebee's um, mode there. It'll all sit nice and securely. And to further lock it all down, there's these little panels here on the sides that'll fold up. And if you look, there's a peg and a little tab. And we just lift this piece up and just make sure that it pegs and locks in and kind of fills in his midsection there and it kind of really all holds it all together. And it's just a matter of kind of making it stretch just enough that it'll go up there and it will peg in and hold it in nice and securely. So now we can come to the legs. His legs can be a bit tricky, but to start, we want to come to these panels here and lift them up so they're up and out of the way. So we have clearance to pull the toes out and make note of how the toes and feet are kind of situated in there but there's a heel spur out here. So what you want to do is you want to kind of grab the heel spur and you notice it stays outside um, of the piece. And you want to bring this all forward like this. You know, we'll move this way and you can kind of see how his, his foot kind of uh, builds there for where most of his foot is. So we want to take this wheel and hinge it downwards into the space where it's available. There's this little uh, kind of heel spur piece. We want to fold it down so that it lines up like that and then take this little panel and peg it into the foot and that'll lock um, his heel and his foot all together. So we'll come to the other side and do it again. So again, make note of how this heel spur kind of fits on the outside like that. And we'll bring this down, straighten out the foot and we'll point the toe, bring the heel spur back, flip this tire down, we'll unpeg, flip it down flip down that little heel spur part, which can be easy to forget and miss, and then move and peg in that little uh, part from the toe so that this is all one cohesive piece. The legs will now accordion down on two steps like that. And the uh, this panel here, there's a peg that matches this tab, this spot, and then the, the upper part here just kind of collapses up along the back of the leg making a nice clean um, robot leg. So we'll come over here, we'll extend his knee and his leg, peg that part in, push this part up, come to these hip panels, and you wanna rotate them kinda of however you like. We'll come to his arms here, lift up on this panel, and then we can flip out his hands can be a bit stiff to kind of flip it around. And then the panel will kind of peg back down. We can open up his uh, hands there. So we'll do the same on the other side. We'll open it up, flip the fist out, and then just kind of situate the uh, piece back like that. And he gets his hands. Come to the back here. These little pieces here will fold down. They're actually in dedicated tabs for them to kind of move into place. And you kind of angle these back. Final finishing touches, he actually does have these little uh, kind of neck pieces here. They're on ball joints near his head, so you can kind of lift up on those. And they can be a bit tricky to get to, so you have full um, head and neck articulation. And here is MPM3 in his uh, robot mode. Very cool looking figure. Let's go and take a look at some closer up detail for this guy. Taking a closer look at Bumblebee's robot mode here. You can see it's got a lot of really nice um, detail here in his robot mode. Very clean um, overall. Again, that entire canopy um, hides up underneath his chest here. Um, yeah, he does have these little spires that hang down here from the windows, but you don't see them most of the time, but just an amazing looking version of that uh, movie Bumblebee design. He is a nice warm yellow throughout. The paint and the plastic seem to match, but then this, What's kind of hard to tell in pictures is that this is a nice metallic uh, gunmetal gray um, throughout. I can't tell if it's, I mean, parts of it are painted, parts of it are actual plastic, but then he does have silver details called out here like on his arms and yellow paint. Does have the uh, license plate belt buckle. Very clean um, legs overall. I mean, just a very slim, clean looking figure. Definitely the best uh, robot mode legs of a uh, Bumblebee figure we've gotten yet. He does have a lot of die cast in him. Again, you can see that this is die cast, this is die cast, his toe or his toe is die, die cast. I'm pretty sure his uh, torso here is die cast, and of course this bar here 
So he's a lot of metal in him. So he's, again, very heavy. The only detriment to that weight is that he is a little bit back heavy, or can be, if you don't get him uh, posed correctly. So straight up, po straight, standing straight poses can be a bit difficult for him, but you can see that he's doing a pretty good job of just holding his uh, poses here quite well. As far as articulation, his head platform here is on the swivel, but then he also can look up and down, so you can get some pretty surprisingly emotive poses um, out of that mechanism here with that set. These little panels here, these little uh, spindles are on ball joints, so you can move them if you'd like. The arms here are on a soft um, ratchet. I'll it up down. Uh, he's got a little bit of play here with the shoulder, but as well as an individual disc joint here to move up quite a bit. This piece can move in and out. He's got a bicep swivel. An odd little piece here is he actually has an additional joint here at right above the elbow. He can curl his elbow. Um, 90 degrees and rotate at the, again the bicep. The hands are on a swivel uh, disc. They are individual fingers. Uh, the thumb here can pivot in and out with its own digit. The bottom two fingers here are conjoined and they have their own fingertips and then the pointer finger here also has a fingertip. So you've got a nice posing options as far as the hands are concerned. He can rotate 360 degrees here at his waist. Fully ratcheted legs forward and back into the side so nice and stiff uh, thigh swivel here 90 degree knee bend with ratchets the feet have a lot of play to them so he's got a dedicated um, ankle tilt there but also this little piece part of the foot can also rotate and the toe can move forward and back the heel spur can move you just going to kind of be careful with the toe here that you make sure that this piece stays pegged uh, together otherwise it'll kind of fall apart but then you do have a lot of play as far as forward and back and see here if you're not careful this part can come loose so you got to make sure that when you're posing him you're kind of moving around like that and again just to note all the different like detail here on the figure that it's just really subtle and it's hard to see on the camera but there are it almost seems like there is a paint wash in places like here it looks like there's a paint wash and there actually is a little bit of painted different metallic colors here on like these little pieces this little centerpiece here like on his face it feels like Albeit, albeit subtle, there is um, different painted metallic colors um, on his legs, on his arms. And it's a lot um, nicer looking in, uh, in actual person. As far as his uh, accessories, again, he does come with that little uh, cannon piece here for his hand. If you don't want to put it on his hand, you can just come to his back. Back here is a little peg, and there's a peg on the weapon itself. And so you can store that on his back if you'd like. But if you would like to install it, we come to his hand over here, lift up on this panel, and we want to put the, fit, the hand back um, into the, uh, canopy, or the cavity here. And then take the uh, cannon piece here, and it's actually keyed a specific way, and then push this down, and this will actually peg down and hold and kind of make it look more cohesive um, here for his cannon arm. And it does look really good, and overall it does look like it kind of just extends on his base hand um, overall. As far as his battle mask here, um, be careful with it. So it's a little bit different. So lift up on just the center spire of his of his head and helmet here, and as he does lock down, and then take this piece and it hinges downward on a double hinge, and then this will come down and it'll peg in and hold it in securely. And see, he's got a really really nice um, battle mask. I'm um, definitely the best battle mask of the. Uh, toy versions of this figure we've gotten so far. As far as overall posability, he definitely shines in this department. Um, you can get some really deep knee bends and action poses out of the figure. Um, you can see here, it just looks really nice, very natural, very dynamic. He can hold these nice stiff um, poses, again, with all his different ankle tilts and such. He actually, if you'd like to, you, to, you can actually have him um, kneel down um, quite easily. Which is kind of surprising for a figure like this. You can see they've added a lot of uh, posability and joints to this version of Bumblebee. So you have a lot of range of kind of getting this guy set up for displays. And that's definitely where this figure excels over pretty much every other Bumblebee we've had so far. It's just a really solid version of the movie uh, character so far. So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons here for uh, Masterpiece Bumblebee. Comparing MPM3 with a kind of variety of different premium class uh, Bumblebee figures. Here on the left we've got the original Human Alliance uh, Bumblebee from the Revenge of the Fallen movie. 
Here's Deluxe Class Battle Blade Bumblebee, which is a Deluxe Class figure from Hunt for the Decepticons. Here's Y. Jiang's uh, Robot Force Battle Hornet, which is their kind of uh, reuse and updated take on the Battle Blade uh, figure with some more detail and overall kind of part count. And then here we've got MPM3. You can see how they all kind of scale next to each other, where MPM3 is kind of this uh, larger deluxe class uh, Voyager figure, shorter than the uh, Human Alliance figure, but uh, bigger than the deluxe. And I'll go into some more closer up uh, comparisons between uh, Battle Hornet here and MPM3 in a moment. But here you can see how they all kind of stack up, how they all handle um, the kibble in overall details. Um, the Human Alliance one, of course, was an in interesting attempt back when it was originally released. Uh, definitely not the best Bumblebee figure. Battle Blade here is probably my favorite deluxe class figure. Um, just really poseable, a lot of nice features. The Y Jiang kind of takes that and improves upon it. But uh, overall, I think uh, MPM3 is kind of the best movie Bumblebee figure we've gotten to date. Comparing Camara modes across the figures, again, Human Alliance, Battle Blade, Battle Hornet, and MPM3. You can see how the ones on the left here are more based off of that Revenge of the Fallen version of Bumblebee, the second movie, with the darker yellow and kind of the, the hood stripes as they are versus the kind of first movie design here seen on MPM3. And you can kind of see how they share um, similar details as far as their license plates or uh, tail lights here. The only figure with uh, rubber wheels with chrome rims is Battle Hornet here. And then to give you an idea of just how, again, how large uh, uh, MPM3 is here, here he is next to Deluxe. Again, quite a bit uh, bigger than Deluxe, but not quite as large as uh, the Human Alliance. Human Alliance is uh, probably an inch tall, inch longer overall, and just bigger in general. But my favorite of these figures is uh, definitely MPM3. Taking a closer look at Battle Hornet here and MPM3, you can see that they're both uh, masterpiece takes on a movie-styled Bumblebee. The official one here is on the right. The Wai Jing effort is based off of this deluxe class figure here with the same um, uh, engineering the legs, arms, and such. So being based off a of Battle Blade, he does have the integrated um, arm cannon here, which could fully fold away. If you like, it's fully uh, integrated. He does have the flip-out battle axe on this hand. And then he does have the working um, battle mask that he can slide down if you like. But then they've added additional joints. So he's got ratchets in his arms. The backpack works a little bit different. The chest works a little bit different. And then he's got ball jointed hands here. But he does not have ankle tilts. And that's kind of that's in where a place where the uh, official one definitely has got it beat. It was as far as a little bit sturdier build, full ankle tilts, posable fingers. Um, he does not have an integrated uh, arm cannon here, but a little bit better overall kind of engineering design here. But then you get a whole lot of nice paint here. You can see there's some, some kind of chrome and copper and silver kind of throughout on the arms and, in the, and the torso here, where they've really detailed uh, Battle Hornet here. Uh, MPM3 is a little bit more cohesive overall, not as uh, kind of uh, parts formery, up short of these little spires on the back. They're both the overall same uh, weight, um, you know, with a bit of die cast in both of them. Uh, MPM3 here is six and seven eight ounces. Whereas uh, Battle Hornet is uh, seven and three quarter, but then Battle Hornet does have uh, chrome wheels here and rubber tires. So, you know, if it's kind of personal preference on kind of which one like looks the best to you. Um, you can see that uh, MPM3 here is a warmer yellow overall that kind of matches the movie a little bit better. And this is a bit softer yellow, but then um, Battle Hornet here is quite a bit cheaper than MPM3. Camaro mode comparisons between the two. Um, again, you can see that this is a bit brighter yellow, a bit more pale compared to the warm here on the official one. Um, Battle Hornet is based off of a newer model of Camaro than this one on the right. And you do get things like uh, chromed rims and rubber tires and the same kind of nice detail across both of them. I do prefer the warmer yellow on the official one. They both roll quite well. And it kind of has personal preference on which one you kind of like as your masterpiece Bumblebee. I think I do prefer the official one um, over Battle Hornet. Comparing MPM3 with other movie characters, here we've got Revenge of the Fallen um, Leader Class Optimus Prime, and we've got Leader Class Starscream. In Japan, uh, Leader Class Starscream is actually released as Masterpiece Movie Starscream, and the upcoming MPM4 uh, retake of uh, Masterpiece uh, Movie Optimus Prime essentially is the same height here as uh, Leader Class uh, Optimus. And you can see how they all kind of scale and look um, side by side. 
Um, I would say that uh, MPM3 here is a little bit better engineering overall and better production than these other figures, but you can see how well they, uh, this version of Bumblebee kind of stacks up with other larger masterpiece styled versions of these characters, and so it would look great um, alongside these other guys um, on your shelf. And vehicle mode comparisons, again, this is the leader uh, figure, not the Masterpiece one, but the Masterpiece one essentially is the same size and same design. And you can see how well uh, MPM3 here kind of fits to match this aesthetic and this size with the leader class figures or the Masterpiece figures. And you can see just how the nice bits of detail and how they've scaled it um, make it so that it looks great with these other figures as well as future Masterpiece uh, movie figures. Solid release from Takara Tomy and Hasbro here. And a final comparison here with some official Masterpiece cars. You can see how MPM3 here stacks up to figures like Wheeljack and uh, Bumblebee. He's a bit taller than your average uh, Masterpiece car here, but has the same great uh, engineering and kind of build and production as a Masterpiece style figure. Just a little bit taller, but of course a different aesthetic overall. And car mode comparisons. Again, MPM3 here is a little bit larger than your standard Autobot car. So his Camaro is a bit larger than Wheeljack but you can kind of get a sense of how he uh, scales here compared to these other uh, Masterpiece cards here in his uh, Camaro mode. Same nice detail, same nice design, and again, definitely Masterpiece level of figure here from Takara Tomy and Hasbro. Some final thoughts here for Transformers Masterpiece movie series MPM3 Bumblebee, or the Masterpiece movie Bumblebee from Takara and Hasbro. This is a nice, solid uh, toy. It's kind of impressive what Takara and Hasbro are able to do to kind of give us this masterpiece version, this uh, kind of definitive version of Movie Bumblebee in toy form. Uh, this almost looks like a statue or model kit to me. It almost looks like the DM DMK set where it's detailed and kind of nicely proportioned as it is. And it transforms really solidly into its uh, original, you know, Movie One uh, Camaro mode. And you get, you know, you get the cannon, you get the battle mask, you get posable fingers, you get some die cast. Um, it's just a really solid toy, a really fun toy, and extremely poseable toy. And so I'm really happy that Takara and Hasbro are kind of venturing into this movie series of uh, Masterpiece figures. So the Chosen Prime expects to get our remaining stock of uh, MPM3 here sometime mid-July. If you want to pick this figure up, I do recommend getting your pre-orders in. Um, like I said earlier, we're on the impression that this is going to be the same exact figure um, from Takara as it is from Hasbro, maybe a different insert. I don't think there's going to be any difference at all. So uh, if you want this guy, make sure to get your pre-order in. And then also the uh, Optimus Prime version of Masterpiece, the MPM4, is up for pre-order the Chosen Prime and is due sometime, sometime in August. So again, this is an excellent figure. I'm really happy that uh, this guy is in my hands, so take care.